Is the ACC in trouble? The latest Florida State news certainly makes it look that way. Howdy, everybody. Welcome back to Winning Cures Everything, where we talk college football year-round. Uh, realignment, of course, has been the name of the game since the summer of 2021, uh, back when we learned that Oklahoma and Texas were leaving the Big 12 for the SEC. Uh, the powers that be at Florida State, who has been a member of the ACC, the Atlantic Coast Conference, since 1992, uh, have been talking about moving to a better conference for what seems like forever at this point. And the reasoning behind this uh, was to make sure that the Seminoles football program does not get left behind their peers, uh, namely the Florida Gators football program, right? For those that don't know what's going on, uh, Southeastern Conference member institutions are projected to start earning over like $100 million per school, uh, I believe in 2028, thanks in part, of course, to the conference's latest contract with ESPN. Uh, and that $100 million number uh, is according to a research company called Navigate. Uh, now, to compare, the ACC schools are currently locked into a contract that will pay them less than $40 million annually through 2036. Now, before we dive into Florida State's legal tussles, uh, financial negotiations, you know, the seismic implications for the ACC and college football at large, let's uh, let's go on and do a quick refresher, right? In 2021, Texas and Oklahoma announced that they are going to the SEC, uh, and that put the SEC at 16 members, uh, and it left the Big 12 at only eight schools. So the Big 12 then backfills with AAC schools, uh, Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF, along with independent BYU, and that puts the league back up to 12 schools. In summer of 2022, USC and UCLA announced they are leaving for the Big Ten. Uh, the Pac-12 doesn't have a media contract done or media rights contract done at that point, so USC and UCLA leaving really puts them on shaky ground. Uh, so then in 2023, the Pac-12 just completely falls apart, uh, with Oregon and Washington also joining the Big Ten, bringing that conference up to 18 teams. And then, of course, once that happens, then you have Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah joining the Big 12, which puts them up to 16 teams. Now, the ACC, which had been sitting at 14 schools in football, 15 in the other sports, of course, thanks Notre Dame, uh, they added Stanford, Cal, and SMU. So the ACC is now a 17-school football conference. Uh, the SEC brings in Texas and OU. The Big Ten gets USC and Oregon and Washington, etc. The Big 12 brings in other like brands. And the ACC effectively got the leftovers. So that takes us back to Florida State, whose board of trustees have been saying publicly for months that they want to get out of this conference, that they have to get out of this conference. On December 22nd, 2023, the board of trustees voted unanimously to take legal action against the ACC in what amounts to be just a, a high-stakes poker game, right? Uh, the ACC grant of rights, which ties the schools to the league until 2036, and the conference's games to ESPN until that time as well, uh, would, per Florida State's lawsuit, cost the school $572 million to leave the conference. Uh, and that includes the exit fee and the TV rights tab for the duration of the contract. Uh, Florida State filed the suit in Leon County, Florida, of course. You know, home field advantage and all that. So Florida State's lawsuit is an attempt to void the grant of rights, and it paints the withdrawal fee as, uh, quote, uh, unreasonable restraints of trade in the state of Florida. Now, the school claims the ACC has mismanaged its members' media rights. Uh, they're claiming that the ACC schools have lost $82 million each year in revenue uh, due to a deal with Raycom, which Florida State alleges was a deal made in the best interest of former ACC Commissioner John Swafford's son, who worked for Raycom Sports. Uh, Florida State also stated that the ACC is imposing draconian exit fees and penalties for uh, withdrawing from the conference. Now, the ACC, of course, filed a countersuit in January in North Carolina. Uh, now, why in North Carolina? Of course, to take it out of Florida, where Florida State would more than likely get a uh, uh, a much nicer experience. <laughs> they would get a judge, usually, uh, that would side with them. 
Uh, but in their case, they cited serial breaches of critical legal promises and obligations uh, by Florida State. The crux of the argument is that Florida State has been playing ball under the current contract. They've been reaping the benefits, and they've been cashing the checks. So in January, we were at a bit of a standstill. Right, But the ACC filed something in the Leon County case last week that makes it look like we might be headed for another round of realignment. Uh, The ACC mentioned a clause, uh, and and they hinted at Florida State's chance to buy back TV rights and basically turning a potential penalty into a mere, quote, commercial possibility. And that's their words, not mine. Uh, A potential negotiation, I mean, that's a, a slick move. Uh, it it suggests a back door that Florida State might just swing wide open, right? And it's pretty shocking because we had been led to believe that the ACC grant of rights was an ironclad document, uh, that the, you know, it, at least that was the terminology that was used. There's only one copy of it. If schools want to see it, they got to travel to Charlotte, North Carolina to read it. Uh, Florida State filed the lawsuit, honestly, because everyone thought that it would be almost impossible for them to leave the conference before the television deal with ESPN had ended. Now, of course, there's all kinds of stories around whether there's a a conference or network option after 2027, but that's not the point right now. The point is that the ACC basically admitted that schools can buy their way out of the conference. So now to the real question. Why should college football fans be interested in this? Now, as you should know, at least by now, we're moving to a 12-team playoff for the 2024 and 2025 seasons. After that, there's no contract right now, and I'll talk more about that on the latest uh, Winning Cures Everything podcast. Make sure and subscribe over there, um, or become a member here on YouTube, and you can get those podcasts as well. But anyway, uh, so, you know, we thought there was a deal with ESPN and the CFP that was already done last week, but apparently there's not. Again, we'll talk about it on the pod. But anyway... We're moving to a 12-team playoff for at least two years. Right now, it is expected to include five automatic qualifiers. It's the top five highest-ranked conference champions. SEC, Big Ten, ACC, Big 12, and a group of five conference. But if the ACC falls apart, then all bets are off for AQ inclusion, right? If the SEC and the Big Ten get the biggest brands in the sport... There's not going to be a shot for any of these other conferences. Like we're we're not going to talk here about whether or not they should in this video, but look, smaller schools have been more than a bit concerned with the idea of it being a power 2 and everyone else. You know, where it, in comparison it used to be the power 5 and the group of 5. The Pac-12 has already gone the way of the Dodo. If Florida State's case is successful and they don't have to pay a dime to get out of the conference or even if they negotiate and it's substantially less money than originally thought, then the Seminoles certainly will not be the only school to leave the ACC in search of greener pastures. Uh, Florida State could absolutely be the domino that sends the whole ACC structure tumbling down. Uh, Clemson, Miami, potentially North Carolina, and others uh, might just follow FSU out the door. I mean, we're talking about a potential mass exodus that could leave the ACC looking like a ghost town, with, you know, the big brands attempting to be invited to the SEC and the Big Ten as well. Uh, The saga is not just a legal or a financial battle. It's a a strategic chess match uh, that could redefine the landscape of college football, right? With with ESPN, Fox, and of course other heavy hitters in the mix, uh, the stakes are as high as it gets. Like, if you want to avoid a splitting of the big schools from the smaller schools, you do not want this to happen. If you don't want a mini NFL on Saturdays in the fall, this is the exact thing that you're hoping to avoid. Uh, I mean, right, we're witnessing a realignment arms race. Uh, The future of the ACC, Florida State, and college football as we know it hangs in the balance. It's it's high octane, high stakes, you know, it's a Game of Thrones. Uh, The outcome could absolutely shape the destiny of the sport for generations to come. And so... So from here, what's next for Florida State and the ACC, right? Are the Seminoles going to break free, or or will the ACC manage to keep its conference together? Um, The story, far from over. The implications uh, are as thrilling as they are unpredictable. The divorce certainly seems much more likely now. 
Uh, but we'll be keeping a close eye on the developments. I'll be talking soon about whether or not Florida State would be best suited for uh, the Big Ten or the SEC if they do get out of the ACC. So do me a favor, like this video for me. It's a little thumbs up button down there. Make sure and hit that subscribe button and, uh, and hit the notification bell for updates on this and all things college football. Uh, until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and uh, of course, God bless college football and hopefully all of your tickets cash this week.